today we are going to talk about five crucial steps that you need to take right as you start a car rental business. Before I get into that, click below, grab the five things you must do to start a car rental business. And that also includes the car share growth guide, which gives you a city by city breakdown of which car share platforms are strongest in your area. Also give this channel a like and a subscribe. I always appreciate it. I'll give you my running commentary on what I think are some just necessary things you need to have and research before you really launch a car share business in our industry. First of all, I want to say that I do think there's plenty of business even still for anyone to get into this business. There's a lot of room even still. We are not at saturation. It may feel like we're at saturation within some markets and with some makes and models of cars, but I don't think this industry is anywhere near saturation at this point. If anything, the need for temporary vehicles in cities is growing quite a bit. First of all, I'll say this, having either cash or credit is very useful in this business. Let's say you don't even have much cash. You definitely need to have credit. You've got to have one or the other. Mainly the reason is just for car acquisition, right? So you've got to either build up your business credit. Before you do that, you're going to have to have personal credit. So to do that and to get up to five, six, seven cars, it's probably going to take some credit that you're just going to have to use to get started. That's really how I got started in this business. I got basic five cars on credit. As you grow, having cash is definitely more useful. But once you have five or six cars, you can really use the profits from those cars to reinvest into cheaper cars. So what I would say is that it's going to make the road a lot easier. There's a lot of companies out there that lease cars to you for the sake of car share. Mobile lease is one. I know we've talked before about Springfield EV, Car Putty. There's a variety of different companies out there. Anytime you talk to these companies, they're going to run a credit check. And it's just going to help you make things a lot easier for you if you have good credit. Secondly, I will tell you, it is very important to understand the difference between Turo, between get around and private rental agreements. A lot of you understand Turo. Some of you understand get around. Almost none of you understand private rentals. <laughs> so what I would say is that understanding all three forms of operations really gives you a firm and solid way to run your business because it's going to require all three and knowledge of all three at different times throughout the year. This business is very seasonal. It's very cyclical. And so what works in the summer on get around may not work the same way during the winter and vice versa with Turo. Private rentals historically are stronger in the winter, whereas Turo and get around are stronger in the summers. If you can understand the seasonality of the business and how to use and choose different plays in the playbook throughout the year, that's going to help you to really equalize cash flows throughout the year. And also something you have to consider is that how much do you want your profit to be and your margins to be compared to ease of use, scalability, etc. These are all things you have to take into consideration. So if you want max margin, max profit, you're okay with doing more work on the business to get it up to that level. Some of you want something a little more passive and are fine with taking a little revenue cut on that front. Thirdly, understand your city's dynamic, the landscape in your local area. If you live out in the suburbs or in a rural area, Turo is probably going to be the way to go for you. We're working with Uber drivers. If you're in the downtown area of a city, you are definitely going to be in get around territory. If you're wondering which markets are strongest for get around, I would say Boston, Chicago, North Jersey, Philadelphia, DC, Atlanta. On the West Coast, it's probably San Francisco and LA. If you're outside those areas, you're probably going to want to go with Turo. Most cities have some form of strong rideshare presence. They have a lot of rideshare drivers. And so you do always have options on how to rent your car. It's just a function of how do you do it and how do you make the most money in your area. But studying that dynamic in your area is definitely helpful. That's why I include the car share growth guide, which is in the description of this video. It gives you basically a city by city breakdown of which car share platforms are strongest in your area in major cities, which is very useful. Number four, you have to understand car share insurance. We talk about this a lot on this channel. If you want to really kind of digest all this information quickly and within a few hours, click on my description below there is a product that can help you do that but what i would say is that you really just need to understand car share insurance it's very nuanced it's very different than insuring a regular car for personal use you really need to go into this space with eyes wide open to understand exactly how to insure the car or the type of rental situation you want to do like i said it always depends on where you're located and the state you're located in depends on which form of rentals you're using whether turbo get around private rentals and it also matters 
just how many cars you have as well. If you have five cars, that's a different answer compared to if you have 25 cars. And number five, lastly, I would take the time to really understand the ride share market. I know most of you do not want to delve into this space. Most Turo hosts cannot stand the ride share market. They consider that beyond the dregs of society. They don't want to deal with that clientele. They're very upset that Uber has partnered with Turo to allow ride share drivers to use their cars. I think that's a mistake in terms of mindset. I think there's a lot of money to be made on the ride share side. That's how I started in this industry was renting two Uber drivers. And I will tell you that was a very lucrative period of time, even though it had more headaches. If you're just doing a Turo business, if you're just doing a get around business, the economics on those businesses are not bad, but it's really good on the private rental side with Uber drivers. That said, are there more headaches? Yes. Is there a way to deal with them in a way that can incentivize good behavior? Yes. There is nuance to this business, but the rideshare drivers, in my opinion, they have the best margins in this business. So overall, I would tell you, understand all of the different forms of car share and private rentals, understand location, understand insurance. Don't write off rideshare drivers. And also, it always helps to have cash and credit or both. All that to say, that's what I would say that you need to really have starting out in this business. Drop some comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Before I go, click below, grab the five things you must do before starting a car rental business. I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you.